Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss River Oxa Ban. What is this track River Oxa Ban? From the name of this track, we can find one of the suffix Zaban. Here XA indicates factor 10A. The term ban signifies it inhibits the activity of factor 10A. So River Oxa Ban is one of the factor 10A inhibitor. And this drug acts as anticoagulant to inhibit the formation of the clot by inhibiting the coagulation cascade. Since factor 10A plays an important role in coagulation pathways, inhibition of this factor results in the decreased coagulation. That's why Revoroxaban can be used in the conditions where there is a formation of abnormal clot which is called as thrombus. This thrombus is rich in platelets, coagulation factors and lipids like cholesterol where this drug can reduce the thrombus formation by inhibiting the clot formation. Normally this thrombus is highly pathological when it is going to be fragmented it can block the blood vessels. So a small fragment from the thrombus can enter into the blood vessels where it can block these blood vessels resulting in systemic embolism. So in these conditions rivaroxaban can be used to reduce the embolism formation and reduce the risk of sudden stroke in the patients. Particularly in the patients with non-valvular atrial fibrillation, the heart is contracting at a high rate which increase the clot formation resulting in the stroke in the patients as well as it can increase the systemic embolism. In such conditions, rivaroxaban can be used to reduce the clot formation thereby to reduce the risk of stroke and embolism. Similarly, this drug can be used in the patients who are having the risk of deep vein thrombosis which may lead to pulmonary embolism. So again in such conditions, Revoroxaban can be used. So today in this video, let us see how this drug acts, what are the important precautions, side effects, doses, all these things we will discuss in this video. Now let us see how this drug acts. Within the interim of the blood vessels, factor 10A plays an important role in clot formation. This factor 10A activates another factor prothrombin or factor 2. Normally, factor 2A requires other cofactors like factor 5A, phospholipids and calcium. These cofactors and minerals can be combined with the factor 10A, which is then can interact with the prothrombin 2 such that it is going to be converted into factor 2A. Now, factor 2A is the thrombin, which is the active form of the factor 2. And this can convert the other precursor fibrinogen. This fibrinogen can be converted into fibrin meshwork by the factor 2A. This meshwork is responsible for formation of dense clot which increase the thrombotic events. Now Revoroxaban is an anticoagulant. It can act on the factor 10A thereby it can reduce its activity. This results in the decreased clot formation thereby it reduce the thrombus formation. In this way, Revoroxaban can be used as anticoagulant. Now, let us the precautions of this drug. Since Revoroxaban is one of the anticoagulant, one of the important precautions of this drug is that this drug can increase the risk of bleeding within the patients. So, this drug should be carefully given as this drug reduces the factor 2A activity, thereby it reduces the clot formation. So, this may result in the increased risk of bleeding, which is more pronounced with other drugs like aspirin which is an antiplatelet agent. Similarly, fibrinolytics like altiplase, urokinase, all these drugs can increase the risk of bleeding produced by rivaroxaban. So, caution should be taken when rivaroxaban is combined with antiplatelets and fibrinolytics. Similarly, CYP3A4 inhibitors like ketoconazole, ritonavir, these drugs can inhibit the metabolism of rivaroxaban which increase the levels of this drug thereby they can increase the risk of bleeding. So again CYP3A4 inhibitor should not be combined with Revoroxaban. Since risk of bleeding is more pronounced with anticoagulants, the patient should be closely monitored and the bleeding can be controlled by few of the methods. And in case of pathological bleeding, the drug should be withdrawn. But in the normal case of bleeding, the Revoroxaban may be replaced with an alternative agent to reduce the risk of bleeding. This rivaroxaban is highly protein bound, so when it is bound to the protein, it is not easily excreted, even it is not easily undergo dialysis, so normal drug molecules can easily undergo dialysis, 
but those molecules which are protein bound are not dialyzable thereby we cannot reverse the risk of bleeding produced by rivaroxaban under its toxic levels and there is no specific antidote is available for this drug but prothrombin complex concentrates can somewhat reduce the risk of bleeding which is produced by rivaroxaban similarly in the case of any premature discontinuation of the drug this drug may increase the thrombotic events so risk of thrombosis is more pronounced on sudden stopping of the dose in completing the therapy so there is a sense to balance between the risk of bleeding and risk of thrombosis at high dose it increases the risk of bleeding but when it is suddenly stopped it can increase the risk of thrombosis so this drug should be carefully given to the patients who are having more risk for thrombosis under optimal conditions to control the bleeding as the side effect similarly this drug should not be given to the pregnant woman as it increases the risk of hemorrhage related with the pregnancy now let us see the side effects of this drug as we have discussed bleeding is one of the important side effect of this drug so it can produce some gastrointestinal bleeding as well as cranial bleeding apart from hemorrhage it can produce other side effects like abdominal pain toothache dyspepsia sinusitis back pain fatigue and osteoarthritis joint pain can be produced by this drug how it is given this drug is available as a tablet and in non volvular atrial fibrillation to prevent any thrombotic events this drug can be given at a dose of 20 mg once daily but for the treatment of deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism this drug can be given at a dose of 15 mg given twice daily for 21 days after 21 days the dose may be increased to 20 mg given once daily these 20 mg and 15 mg dose should be given along with evening meal as food reduce the risk of side effects produced by this drug for prophylaxis of dvt and pulmonary embolism this drug can be given at a dose of 10 mg once daily and the therapy can be continued based on prophylaxis for knee and hip joint replacement this drug can be given as a prophylactic so that's about this drug Rivaroxaban Rivaroxaban is one of the anticoagulant it is a factor 10a inhibitor this drug can reduce the risk of deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism and it can also reduce the risk of stroke and systemic embolism that's why this drug can be given in the patients with non volvular atrial fibrillation to reduce the formation of stroke hemorrhage is the main side effect of this drug but when this drug is suddenly discontinued it can increase the risk of thrombotic events so there is a sense to balance between the beneficial effects and adverse effects based on that this drug should be prescribed and hemorrhagic event should be closely monitored so that's all about this drug rivaroxaban hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video